I'm Tim Wisniewski, Plan B. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so as she mentioned, I'm the Chief Data Officer for the City of Philadelphia. Um, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about open source government, particularly how things like open data, civic technology, mobile apps, and civic engagement can come together to form a more open government. But first, let me tell you a bit about how I got into this. Um, Despite my title, I'm actually not a technologist by trade. My background's more in community building. Uh, I started out working elections and got really interested in civic associations and Kensington and wound up managing a business improvement district in Frankfurt uh, where we had like a safety ambassador program and a clean and safe program. Really not much to do with technology in the day to day. For me, technology and software was always a hobby of mine and you know, kind of side projects. The paths never really intersected. But I noticed an interesting pattern working in communities in Philadelphia, and that was the kind of negative associations and skepticism that people had with government in general. Comments like, ah, they'll never fix that, or the city doesn't care about us, or government's just a bunch of crooks. You know, all of these, uh, that's Frankfurt, by the way, I forgot to switch the slide. All of these impressions of government as this big monolith, this downtown gray building where they work, you know? And it's frustrating because I, it, the result of that is apathy towards government and, and disengagement. And it means that fewer people vote, fewer people pay their taxes, fewer people take care of their property, and more people want to leave the city. That's frustrating to me as, as a poli-sci major because, you know, that's not how democracy is supposed to work. But it's also frustrating because having worked with civic associations and actually called and spoken to people in government, I know that that's not necessarily true. I mean, sure, there's, there's paycheck collectors in every government. You know, it's typically a steady job. But beyond that, at all levels of government, there's really great people trying to do great things, putting in a lot of hours and really caring and trying. But a lot of people don't know about that. And, and I will say even even knowing those folks in government who helped us out at civic associations, kind of being an insider in a sense, I could still find it to be a maze to navigate government. So obviously this problem is not unique to Philadelphia, right? Those of you who've lived in other cities have seen it in pretty much any city you go to. But I found an interesting point of comparison. I mentioned before that I have uh, some background in, in software and there's this thing called open source software. So most software, when you, when you hear about it, you might go to a website or buy it and, and install it, and it, it works great. And you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. And maybe down the line, you hear something fishy about it, and you look for something else because you don't really know how it works. But then there's this whole other category of software called open source software. And the idea with that is that the folks actually publish their code on the internet. And anyone can see the code line by line, exactly how it works. Not only that, but you can ask questions. You can interact with the people who wrote the software, ask them questions about it. You can report a bug on the software and participate in a conversation around the bug and actually see the code that, the re that resolves the bug. And taking it even a step further, you can contribute code. Let's say you have an idea for a new enhancement. You can add that code to it and they can pull it in and give it to everybody. It's this, it's this crazy community that like, it's like everyone's trying to make it all a better place and everybody's working together. It's this crazy collaborative cooperation in humanity that unfortunately we don't really see in many other places. But it's really fascinating, right? And, and ultimately, it promotes a sense of trust because you know what's going on behind the scenes. You feel like you're, you're a part of it. So the question is, how do we get that in government? Right? Wouldn't that be cool? So obviously, people are still trying to figure that out, right? <laughs> But there are three things that we, that we can do and that we're trying to do here at the city. It's uh, open, engage, and collaborate. So number one, open. Just like seeing the code online for software, you should be able to see exactly what's going on inside of government. Who government is, what government does, what people are responsible for, and how it does it. And in 2014, that's not only text and multimedia, it's data. Government is run by data. And the public wants to see the data. So we have an open data program in Philadelphia. And the concept with that is 
all of this data that, not all of it, but most of this data is public record and subject to Freedom of Information Act requests or right to know requests. But the problem is not everybody knows about this right to know form or where to get it or who to send it to or what data exists, to be quite frank. So the premise of open data is that we proactively publish that data on the web, on opendataphilly.org. And we've seen 20 different departments in the city of Philadelphia publish over 80 data sets since Mayor Nutter signed the executive order in April of 2012. Uh, so that, that's how we help get the data out to the public. That's too fast. Um, so that's, that's being open and elucidating this stuff, just like the software community publishes their source code. Number two is engage. So in the software community, there's pretty much a universally accepted platform for reaching out and sharing your code. That's called GitHub. All you really have to do is post your code on GitHub and people will see it. Working in government, it's a little more diverse than that. Um, you know, software developers, you can at least assume have internet access. <laughs> you know, with government, we don't really have a target audience, right? It's, it's everybody. It's the whole city. Uh, so we have to be a little more creative in how we reach people. But there's some interesting statistics today that may not have been the case five, 10 years ago. For instance, 55% of adults in the country have smartphones. And a lot of them use that smartphone to interact with their friends, their family, and businesses on things like Facebook and text messages and specific applications. We can do that too. We can meet them there. We don't need you to come to us. We can meet you where you're already comfortable. We can make mobile apps. We can make text messaging apps and, and interact with people on mobile-friendly websites. For instance, myphillyrising.com, you can pull up on any phone, even an old phone and any computer. You can log into your neighborhood and find out about upcoming events in your neighborhood, interact with other community members, post resources, let people know what's going on. We also have uh, multilingual uh, like language assistance apps, uh, property search applications that you can use on your phone. Uh, New York City has a, an S a text messaging uh, program for their 311. So if you see a pothole, you can just send a text and talk to somebody over text message. And then we can take these applications into the community, the, the analog approach, if you will, that we've been doing and have gotten very good at and, and help to reach diverse audiences in all sectors of Philadelphia. So that's engage. Finally, we have collaborate. Just like in software, there's things called pull requests that you can submit code uh, as an enhancement or something or a bug fix and they can pull it in and say, yeah, thanks for your code, it'll, it'll be part of the platform now. It's collaboration and we can promote that too. And the way we do that is we acknowledge that we don't, we don't know everything. We, we can't find out about everything. We can't know where all the potholes are in every city, but you can know where all the potholes are on your block. And we want to enable two-way communication. It's one thing to get the message and the information out to the public, who government is and what they're doing and that sort of thing. But it's a whole other thing to actually get information back. Where are the potholes? Where should we be? And, and how can you take action in your community? So the 311 mobile app is a great example of that, where you can point it. It's like a, it's like a graffiti removing laser. You just point it at the graffiti, take a picture. It gets your location, and they tell you when it's resolved. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm a little biased, of course, but I, I, I really like it. Um, and then there's things like uh, Text is In, which is a, a Code for America project, uh, where we ask, would, would you use a rapid transit line along the boulevard to get to Center City? Text in your response. So by that, you're actually participating in the city planning transportation process the same way you participate in a conversation with your buddy about what you're doing this weekend. It's pretty interesting. Um, so the other thing in, in the collaboration part is acknowledging that we don't have all the ideas and we can't build everything. But by putting our data out there in its raw and open format, we're actually enabling other people to fill in those blanks for us, to come up with those ideas and build those things that we couldn't think of or build ourselves. Here's a couple of my favorite examples. Uh, PHLCrimeMapper.com is an application where you can draw a, a kind of a box or something around the neighborhood you're interested in and see all the recent crimes. The city didn't make that, and we didn't ask anybody to make that. A guy named Dave Walk made that on his own because the city put the data out there, the crime incident data. He had this idea and he put it together. It's free and anybody can pull it up on their phone right now. Another one is baldwin.ph to see the, the train times. You can find out if they're on time, how late they are, save it. it it's, it's a great application, probably better than we could have done. Uh, again, we didn't ask any, anybody to build that. We just set to put the data out there. And finally, uh, school bu schoolbudget.phl.io. 
uh, they took the school district published their budget data and these folks made a uh, donut chart where you can dive in layer by layer and see how it breaks down and actually visualize what has traditionally been very complex and very contentious the school district budget. So these are examples of things that, again, we didn't ask anybody to build. Uh, we didn't have the idea to build it, but by putting our data out there, we're enabling people to collaborate and build these things on their own and share with other people. So to recap, publishing software source code and, enable, and collaborating on it promotes a sense of trust and community. And gov open source government can do that too if we open, engage, and collaborate. Those of you eager to collaborate and join us, uh, these are the links to the applications that I mentioned uh, where you can jump on, download them, and collaborate with government. Thanks. <laughs>